This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Benedict Kessler tells us how proteomics helps find biomarkers. Hi Benedict. Hi. What is a biomarker? Uh, a biomarker is a molecular feature or an indicator um, that gives us clues about the biological process, typically for uh, monitoring a disease, disease progression. That can consist of proteins, uh, peptides, uh, lipids, uh, metabolites that we can measure. Biomarker could also be, to give you an example, things like um, your hair that starts to become thin and uh, starts to fall out as you age, blood pressure. But I think in the, in, in the more biomedical terms, these are molecules that we can precisely measure and uh, can give us clues about the underlying biological process. What are the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five or ten years? In the area of biomedical research and uh, biomarker, I would say that the technical advances in analytical equipment may have uh, uh, provoked a huge boost, I think. So, in other words, um, technical equipment that allows us to measure uh, uh, molecular features, biomarkers, much more precisely, uh, in a much more sensitive way, uh, and also quantitative. How can proteomics help us find new biomarkers? So like in uh, the genomics area, where um, this analytical equipment was able to allow us to s- sequence the human genome, in proteomics we use a different kind of uh, analytical equipment to look at the products of what the genome encodes, which are basically the building blocks uh, that living organisms are made of, as also us humans. And these are mostly proteins and peptides. And one of these techniques to, to measure these is based on mass spectrometry. So we measure the masses of these proteins and peptides. And the information about the mass can give us um, Uh, clues about the identity of these proteins and what happens to them and also how much uh, uh, is actually there. And uh, this technique has turned out to be very powerful in in the many areas of biomedical uh, sciences because we can measure not just one uh, molecule, we can measure hundreds and thousands at the same time. So we get a much more broader picture of actually what is happening Uh, in the sample that we analyze. So we can then do uh, comparisons. For example, we can take blood from a normal individual, we can take blood from a diseased person, a person with cancer or a person with a a neurodegenerative disease. We can uh, provide molecular profiles and any differences that we observe, uh, we can then zoom in and identify what these molecular features or potential biomarkers are and they can give us clues Uh, what is actually wrong with the person. Which diseases would be the best targets? The application of proteomics to find new biomarkers is now widely used in practically all diseases that uh, are known because it's a very powerful entry point to really find out where the differences could lie on a molecular level. Uh, in particular that has been successful in areas of uh, infectious diseases, HIV, uh, um, uh, herpes simplex virus infection, uh, uh, also uh, hepatitis virus. So to give you an example, in our case we were able to uh, to use that technology to uh, um, measure and identify the very earliest response that uh, people develop when they get HIV infected. And this is happening within the first few days of infection, where uh, so far we thought we couldn't detect anything. And some of these molecular components that we identified may become uh, useful biomarkers for infectious diseases in general. Uh, However, the area that could probably benefit most of uh, this biomarker uh, research is probably cancer, because cancer takes a long time to develop. And it would be very useful to um, obtain biomarkers at a very early stage, so to detect people who develop cancer in a very early stage, uh, because the earlier you can detect a person with a cancer, the higher the likelihood is that you can then uh, treat the person and uh, the person will then be cured. 
So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Proteomics, as I said before, has uh, uh, turned out to be extremely uh, powerful and informative in areas of uh, basic biomedical research because we, we, can, we have learned a lot about molecular details of, of um, biological process in, in, in particularly in diseases. So if you know exactly what goes wrong, you may be able to define or develop a drug that then can stop that process. Biomarkers could be very useful for doctors to, to make decisions on how to treat patients. So if a biomarker can be developed that can tell you, yes, this patient will respond to this chemotherapy, uh, you can uh, reduce the costs so you don't have to try it out. Um, you don't waste time or uh, uh, energy uh, to treat somebody who will not respond at all. And you also reduce side effects. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? I think to illustrate that I would like to give you an example. One of the interests is to study how proteins are turned over. It's like a little bit um, if you're in your house and uh, your garbage uh, can builds up and if you, if you don't put it out, you just keep it inside your, uh, your house. At some point, it's going to be unbearable to live in there. So like in this situation, the cells have to get rid of uh, their molecular garbage or proteins that are uh, accumulating. And this, uh, there is a particular system in, which is present in each cell, in each, uh, most of the living organisms, in human in particular, which is called the ubiquitin proteasome system that does that in a normal case. And uh, there are situations where that, uh, that particular system doesn't work well, and then proteins uh, accumulate and form aggregates. And that's very often the underlying cause for uh, neurodegenerative diseases, so like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, Parkinson's, where these protein aggregates can then lead to cell death of neurons and then problems with your brain. Uh, so what we have done in the lab, we have developed small molecule inhibitors to block this system, to be able to study what happens when, when you interfere with this uh, uh, molecular disposal system in each cell. And it turns out that um, uh, the molecules, the inhibitors that we worked with, were precursors for a drug that was developed, it's called Velcade, that uh, turned out to be very effective in treating uh, patients with multiple myeloma, which is a, a blood cancer. And it turns out that uh, cancer cells in general are more susceptible to, be, uh, to these type of inhibitors because they grow faster, they proliferate faster, they pr also produce more garbage. And if you stop the garbage uh, disposal system or interfere with it, these cells are then more susceptible to die. So that turned out to be a real, uh, 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 turned out to be a real therapy that was developed for these type of uh, cancer patients. Thank you, Benedict. Thank you.